Greetings, I'm Professor Hobo, and welcome to another Hobo Technos product review. Last fall, we checked out a new product on the market that was crowdfunding on Indiegogo called the Super Bass Pro by Zender. Now, many folks nowadays have issues with crowdfunding and prefer to just wait for the retail version to come out. Well, we have the retail version of the Super Bass Pro right here in hand, but was it worth the wait? Let's find out. As for battery capacity, the Super Bass Pro comes in two different flavors. First is the 2,096 watt hour EV grade NMC battery rated at 1,500 cycles to 80%. That's what this one is. They also have a lithium iron phosphate version with a 1,456 watt hour battery and 3,000 cycle life. I believe those are the only differences between the 1,500 and 2,000 is the battery. They don't have the 1,500 out yet for me to review, so they sent me the retail version of the 2,000. As for size and weight, we'll go ahead and put that at the bottom of the screen, and this is what it weighed on my scale. As for build quality, it is ABS plastic all the way around. It does have a folding luggage handle and wheels that allow you to roll it around. As for inverter size, this unit sports a 2,000 watt pure sign inverter with 4,000 watt surge. Note that Zender does offer a feature called Amp Up, which you can turn on or off inside the app. And it works the same as EcoFlow's X-Boost. It'll allow you to power devices up to 3,000 watts by dropping the output voltage. Now this is fine for power tools or a coffee maker, but should be turned off if you're powering anything with a microchip or a compressor like a microwave or an air conditioner. As for ways to charge, there are several. You can actually charge this with just AC wall outlet power. It does come with this cable. The charger is built in and it will charge at 1800 watts. You can also charge with AC and DC at the same time for a combined wattage of 2400 watts. And that'll charge this one dead the full in under an hour. And it does come with a pair of solar cables. This one is XT60 to MC4. And it comes with MC4 to AC outlet. Yeah, you actually can stick solar into the AC input on this, which is crazy. It's the first time I ever saw anything like that. But you can actually combine AC wall outlet with one of these cables for a combined total of 2400 watts of charging. So AC alone or solar alone charges at 1800 watts or can charge this from dead to full in about an hour and a half. Now there's an optional car charger that wasn't included on my model. That will allow you to charge from 12 volts in about 19 hours. As for 12 volt output types, there are four total. There are three 5521 barrel plug outputs on the front and a single 12 volt cigarette lead or accessory output on the side. Now all four outputs do share a regulated 13.6 volt output at 10 amps or 136 watts. As for USB output types, this does sport a pair of 100 watt output only power delivery ports, a pair of two 20 watt output only power delivery ports. Oddly, there are no USB-A ports on this whatsoever. So there's no quick charge, there's no standard USB-A. However, they do include an adapter for USB-A if you need one. As for other features, the Zendor Superbase Pro does sport a true uninterruptible power supply feature, meaning it has a built-in UPS that will automatically switch loads to the battery when the power fails. So if you have this plugged into AC wall power or a fuel generator of some kind, and that power stops, the battery inside will take over and power the loads off the inverter. Now in the prototype review, I did actually show how fast the UPS switches over. It's definitely fast enough to support a modern PC computer. So if the power goes out, that computer shouldn't lock up, it should continue to run. Now another unique feature to the Zender is it does have a built-in 4G modem, which I'm told uses the AT&T network here in the States. This allows you to access the power station from anywhere in the world with your mobile device, and it also provides access to remote firmware updates. It also has a built-in GPS locator, so if somebody walks away with your Zender, you can contact support to get coordinates of where it's at. As for the warranty, the retail version of the Superbase Pro does come with a two-year manufacturer's warranty. And of course, we took the Superbase Pro into my secret laboratory here where we performed all kinds of crazy experiments on and including, yes, a double-fisted battery capacity test.
surprise, surprise. Surprise, surprise, surprise. <laughs> the result of the AC capacity test is literally identical to what it was last time at 1950 watt hours out of 2096, which means there's no internal change to the battery whatsoever for retail. That means it scored a very impressive 93% on available capacity. And since that was the case, I didn't see any need to really waste another day of my time to redo the DC test on it, because last time it scored 91% on the DC test. So both AC and DC capacity on this scores well above the industry average. Okay, so I have all my notes here from the prototype, and I'm gonna compare what the prototype can do to what the retail version can do. Previously, I was able to hold 2,400 watts for the inverter before it shut down. So I got a heater running on the floor, which is pulling about 1,300. And that means, of course, that we're gonna have to use the solar degenerator. So we'll get to use the solar degenerator and see if it performs exactly like before. So we're watching this number right here. And it shut off, 2450 is exactly where it shut off. So that means no change there at all. From what I can tell so far, I don't think anything in this product has changed from the prototype to retail. But let's go ahead and do the heat soak test or heat capacity test and see if this can run at least five minutes at 2000 watts. And we do know from the prototype, this is a pure sine inverter and it seems to be pretty solid. 110 volts, 60 hertz. So since the prototype Superbase Pro can handle 2000 watts for five minutes, let's try pushing this to 2100 watts for five minutes. See if we can go over the limit a little bit. All right, there we are, just over 2100 watts. Let's see if we can make it the whole five minutes. So there you have it, five minutes at almost 2200 watts. One thing for sure, the Zender Superbase Pro has pretty good cooling. I'm able to push that inverter beyond its limit and while the fans are pretty loud and noisy, it is keeping it cool. Just how loud and noisy? 57 decibels. That's pretty darn loud. I'm afraid you're just too darn loud. Next place. Max charge rate test. This is where we find out how much power can you push into the Zender. Now in the prototype, I was able to do 12 to 100 volts at a maximum of 500 watts. Zender told me that that was a temporary MPPT controller. So what's in there now is different than the prototype. And I can tell you that for sure, because you can see right here, we're running 75 volts at eight and a half amps, and we're pushing in 625 watts. That's a significant bump from the prototype. One other thing that's different, if I try to exceed 75 volts, there we are at 77 volts. It completely shuts off. You can see it says zero. And if I back down to 75, it starts back up again and charges at, again, almost 630. It says 628, but it seems to kind of level out around 625. Now, officially, this only supports up to 60 volts. So let's see if we take it down to the official voltage of 60. You'll see the amps go up as the volts go down because this is hard limited to 600 watts around there. So there you go, 60 volts at 10 amps, which is exactly what it says on the side, 60 volts, 10 amps. And there we have it, 587 watts. So yeah, you can actually pump a few extra watts into this if you can take it up to like 65, 70 volts. Let's see, it's 65 volts. That's well within the safety margin. We're getting 610 watts. So this truly does have a 610 watt input. Now this is through the XT60 connector, which again supports from 12 to 60 volts. So let's take us down to 12 volts and see what it'll be like if you're charging from a car. So that's expected, 12 volts, nine amps, 100 watts. It's safety so you don't melt your cigarette lighter in your car. So what about just like a single solar panel that does 21 volts? 21 volts at 10 amps, 200 watts. So you can plug a single 200 watt solar panel into this, no problem, and it will pretty much max out the controller. So what about dual charging? Can I plug this into the wall power or generator power at the same time you're charging from solar? Let's plug it in and see. Well, it definitely supports dual charging. We're pushing 2,400 watts right now. So there you have it. This does support dual charging at 2,400 watts, which is what we got from the prototype as well. So say 75 volts of solar just isn't enough for you. Say you have 
a larger solar array or you're using residential panels and a long string. And say you need something that can support 160 volts. Well, Zender has you covered. They have a very unique MPPT controller in here that allows you to use solar. Okay, this is, M this is an MC4 on one side and an AC plug on the other side. Now, I've never seen this before. I know this technology exists. I've seen this before on other products, but not on a power station like this, where you can actually send DC solar into an AC input. It does some black magic inside. The text that you're sending DC in there switches it over and allows it basically to act like an MPPT controller. Now this only works from 60 to 160 volts. You can't use this with one solar panel. You can't use it with two solar panels. You have to have three solar panels or more or a large residential solar panel that can pump at least 60 volts. Now that's minimum. Usually when it comes to a controller, you don't want to do the minimum. You want to do a little bit more. So 70, 80 volts is probably about where you really want to be if you're going to use this. And as I said, this accepts up to 160. I was unable to test this last time because I didn't have this yet. This goes up to 200 volts. We're going to find out today exactly how far can you push this with the Zender. So I'm better prepared this time. All right, there we are at 60 volts. So 60 volts is really going to be pushing it. I would say 65 volts. What's interesting is that there's a different symbol that shows up. It's a little sun. What looks like a little sun with a battery. Well, there we go. At 65 volts, it's taking almost 12 amps. 800 watts. All right, we're coming up on to 100 volts. It's still pushing 11 amps in. Okay, the amps are starting to drop a little bit. Okay, so at 150 volts, we're now pushing 1,800 watts of solar into this thing. That is crazy. We're at 170 volts, 1,930 watts. All right, looks like we're getting diminishing returns now. I'm at 180 volts. The amps are now dropping, so it's pretty much limiting itself to about 1,900 watts. Let's keep going. We're 20 volts over what it should be taking. There we are. We're at the maximum of this charger, 220 volts, 8 amps, and we're pushing 1,860 watts. So that's absolutely crazy. Obviously that AC input can take a lot. It might even go beyond 220. Now it does say in the manual 160 volts is the limit. I'm showing you 220 guys. So if you have tons of residential panels in series, I can literally plug my residential system into this at 220 volts and charge my Zender, which is nuts. That's just nuts. Now this means you can put 600 watts in on one side and almost 1,900 watts in on the other side. That makes this the smallest power station with the biggest solar input I've ever seen. So if you're somebody who is looking for a small power station that can handle large residential panels in large quantities, I mean, you could literally pump 2,500 watts of high voltage solar into this little 2,000 watt hour battery. And what does that mean? It means it'll charge in like 40 minutes. In fact, I better shut it off now before it drains the battery running the shop. Because yes, I'm running the entire lab on the Renogy Lycan. So when I'm pulling from the wall outlet now, I'm actually pulling from the Lycan outside. I'm gonna do a separate video on that, don't worry. So how loud is it when it's charging at its maximum rate? Again, 57 decibels, which is pretty darn loud. Now you'd still be surprised the number of people in 2022 that ask me, do these power stations have pass-through charging? They all do now, and if they don't, they should be thrown in a dumpster. There's, there should be no excuse for anyone buying a solar generator power station in 2022 or beyond that doesn't support at least pass-through charging. Now there's a difference between pass-through charging and uninterruptible power supply, or UPS. I think most folks don't understand that UPS is superior to pass-through charging. Uninterruptible power supply means this has a relay inside which takes power from the wall. We're running from that meter in the wall up there which says 1800 watts. It's sending power to this unit. This unit is then acting like a giant power strip, sending that power out to this other meter which says 1700 watts. 
and that is going down to another power station on the floor that I'm using for my testing. Essentially what's happening is the Zender is charging its battery barely at 42 watts, but it's passing through 1700 watts to the power station below. Now, why is this important? Well, a UPS mode means that it doesn't touch the battery. It's taking power from the wall, passing it through to the one on the floor. Now, I just tripped the breaker on this because this can only handle 10 amps, and I was pushing way more than 10 amps through it. But now the battery's gonna charge because there's no load. So what UPS mode does is it allows this unit to pull 1800 watts from the wall total. So if you're running a 600 watt appliance, it'll allow 1200 watts to charge the battery and pass through the UPS mode, the 600 watts to your appliance. Now you can do this all the way up to 1800 watts. If you exceed 1800 watts, you're gonna trip it. Okay, it's just, it's just gonna trip the inverter and it's not gonna work because you're really not supposed to exceed 1800 watts on a typical household outlet. Most household outlets are 15 amps, 1800 watts is the limit. Of course, if you have a 20 amp outlet or something else, you're in a different country, it's a whole other story. And that's exactly what the Zender does. This is a safe product. They do make it so that no matter what, it will not pull more than 1800 watts from the wall. So there's no programming for this UPS. This is a very basic UPS. How do you get it to work? You plug the unit into the wall, then you turn on the inverter. That's it. It's automatically in UPS mode, and it says so right on the screen. So right here above my finger, it says UPS, and it shows a battery means it's charging, and down here, AC wall outlet, so it's charging from the wall at 60 hertz. And it tells you up here, of course, how long it's gonna charge. Now watch what happens when I turn on the load on the floor. You'll see the input go down and the output go up but it's still pulling the same amount from the wall. See how that works? Because I'm pulling so much power out of the outlets, it's not allowing it to charge the battery more than a couple of watts. This is how a UPS mode is supposed to work. So what about the 12 volt outputs? I tested this in the prototype. I tested it again. I'm not gonna waste your time. It's exactly the same as the prototype. There's three outputs on the front and there's a cigarette lighter on the side. All three share 10 amps at 13.6 regulated volts. So yes, all four outputs are regulated for a maximum of 136 watts. USB ports are unchanged. So just like before, there is no USB-A, there is no quick charge. There are two 100 watt power delivery ports, which as tested, they both can push out 100 watts at the same time. So that means charging two MacBook Pros at the same time, which is pretty awesome. And then there's a pair of 20 watt USB power delivery ports. So those are used for lower end devices like charging your phone or tablet or something like that. So no change from the prototype. Musician's favorite, amp interference test. We're gonna go ahead and plug this little keyboard amp into the inverter and see, does it make noise? Now the prototype did pass this test, although the fans were running, even though there was practically no load. But let's see if that's the case here. So there you have the result, it's nice and clean. And I do hear a fan, but it is actually running very quietly this time. So I think they kind of figure that out because last time when you turn the inverter on and you're powering, like this is only taking like five or 10 watts because it's not being played. So the amplifier is not really doing anything. The fan was running pretty loud on the prototype. So they did fix that, they didn't make the fan a little bit smarter and run a little bit quieter whenever you have a lower load. Now the Superbase Pro does support a mobile app. However, this one they showed to me has old firmware on it. And since I'm in a rural area and I can't connect to their 4G, it's not gonna allow me to update the firmware and I can't do it over my mobile because the problem I'm having is my mobile won't connect. So I did actually demo the mobile app last time in the prototype. If you wanna go and see a couple minutes of me showing you how the app works, I'll just go ahead and put the link to that video up here in the corner. You can go click on that or I'll put it in the description. It'll take you back to the prototype review where you can watch that whole thing. It's gonna be a lot longer video than this one and it shows you the app and how it works. Now I will let you know the app does require internet access. There is no way that I found that you can connect to this device, even with Bluetooth, without signing into their cloud. They just don't want you to use this product with your mobile without being on their cloud. So take that to the bank with you. 
So with this button here, you can actually turn off the Wi-Fi and 4G so no one can get in and you don't have to worry about, you know, getting hacked or whatever. And in that case, then you have no connection to your phone either, especially if you uninstall the app. So just letting you know that is an option. So what don't I like about the Super Bass Pro? So here's my list of gripes on the prototype that I reviewed in 2021. First, there was the app. It took literally hours to get it to work last time. This time, I couldn't get my Wi-Fi to connect. Zender tells me it's due to old firmware in this version, and all I had to do is turn it on and the 4G network would update the firmware. Well, guess what? I live in very rural America, and there is no AT&T service out here whatsoever, so it just literally won't connect to the 4G network. So I can't tell you if the app is any better than it was before. Now they did send me a replacement with already updated firmware, but by the time this video has to come out, I haven't even taken it out of the box yet. So I will find that out and probably report on it later down the line. Now I also complained about the fans being too loud. Well, the fan was loud before and it's just as loud now, so no change there. Now the only thing I did notice is that the fans do seem smarter than they used to be. When I had the prototype, I'd turn the inverter on and the fans would just come on and be like pretty loud. Now you turn the inverter on, you don't hear the fans at all, and then they come up real slow. Now the fan is on, but it's very, very quiet. Before in the prototype, it was much louder. So they put in some kind of smart circuitry to wind the fan up depending on temperature. I also made a controversial comment in my original review about the build quality of the case, and there have been no changes there either. Zender tells me that these markings in the plastic are intentional and the Super Bass Pro has indeed not given birth to triplets. So what do I like about the Super Bass Pro? My favorite thing about it is the wide range of solar charging ability through its dual MPPT controllers. One controller supports 12 to 60 volts, really 12 to 75 volts, and the other supports 60 to 160 volts, really 65 to 220 plus volts, this lets you do pretty much whatever you want with your solar setup. The inputs do seem to be limited to 10 amps and 12 amps respectively, but with such high voltages, you can easily get 1200 watts of solar using large residential panels. This is really the most flexible solar charging I've ever seen in a power station to date. I also like that Zender offers both an NMC and lithium iron phosphate version of the same product. Now our orange and black friends should take heed. Zender did say they're going to send me a Super Bass Pro 1500 with a lithium iron phosphate battery sometime this fall, so stay tuned for that. Product price. The Super Bass Pro retail price is $2,099. And my code knocks 100 bucks off of that, bringing it down to 19.99, which is reasonable. It's about a dollar a watt if you look at it that way. But over the 4th of July holiday, there's going to be a flash sale, or maybe we should call it a flashbang sale, on Zender's website where the Superbase Pro 2000 will be only 16.99 or 81 cents a watt. Now that's a pretty killer deal. Now these sale prices are for a very limited time and only valid using my code and link in the description below. So I suggest right now you go ahead and set yourself a reminder for 9 a.m. Pacific time on the 4th of July if you want to snag one of these at the fantastic price of $16.99. Don't forget you got to use that code to get that price. Now as for the 1500 watt hour lithium iron phosphate version, those are not on sale. Those are currently still at a fixed price of $17.99. My coupon's not gonna work. There's no special deal on those. But if you really want one, you can still get one at $17.99. All right, here is the Super Bass Pro solar panel in direct sunlight. It's a pretty cloudy day here in Arizona, so we're not expecting perfect. Maybe you can see this is 117 watts. That's about as best as we're getting today with these current conditions. So these are pretty high quality ETFE coated panels. They do have kickstands, as you can see. I am not using them because the sun is pretty much, you can see from those shadows, it's pretty much overhead. Now that you got to see what the Zender solar panels look like and how they perform, what about solar panels? What's recommended for this product? Well, another thing that Zender allows that Jackery doesn't is 
use of your own solar panels because they do include these adapters with MC4 on them. Jackery does it. That means you can literally use any third party panel you want as long as it's MC4. Now, what am I gonna recommend? If you just want folding solar panels, just get the ones from Zender because you know they're gonna work with the product and you can get a bundle deal. Say you wanna get some flex panels or glass panels or a suitcase kit, just go to hobotech.tv slash Amazon and click on solar kits for lower priced options. I'll go ahead and put the link below in the description. Now, if you're interested in the Superbase Pro, the link and discount code is in the description of this video. I'll also go ahead and put a link at the bottom of the screen with a QR code that you can scan on any mobile device. It'll take you directly to the Zender page where you can check it out. Thanks for watching. If you learned something today, don't forget to give me that thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. If your search for Odin is a pain in the neck, go to YouTube and watch Hobo Tech. Cause he's the best in this and he's a probing that. He's even been probing Odin his cat. If you want to get all the Odin back, go to Hobo Tech. Yeah! The Golf Guy, Andrew Von Rupp, Brian Lewis, John Stacey Soroka, Dr. Steve Eisenhower.